The four previous Kage that were reanimated by Kabuto's Edo Tensei Jutsu are often overlooked by both casual fans and power scalers alike. Mu, Eig, and Getsu and Rasa have all earned the title of Kage due to their very unique skill sets and extremely hacked abilities, but will this be enough to take down the leader of the Akatsuki himself? In this video, we're going to find out if Pain can defeat all four of the old generation Kage at once. We're going to go into this with default battle assumptions, which means that both teams will have absolutely no knowledge on their opponent's abilities. Of course, all six paths of Pain will be at full power with no fatigue, and the Kage will be in their Edo Tensei states as we saw them during the Fourth Great Shinobi War. Before we begin, I'd like to ask you guys to comment your initial thoughts on this matchup down below, and if I end up changing your mind, be sure to let me know as well. But without further ado, let's get right into the video. Second Tsuchikage Mu was commonly referred to as the Null Man or the Non-Person due to his ability to become completely invisible. When he is in this state, his chakra signature is entirely erased and he cannot be sensed nor seen. As a matter of fact, the only person to ever detect Lord Mu when he is in this state is Gara, and that was specifically due to his ability to control the sand in the surrounding environment. However, invisibility is not the only thing Lord Mu is known for. He was actually the first person to ever master Jinton, or particle style. Even while weakened by Edo Tensei, Lord Mu's Jinton was still strong enough to equal out Onoki's, who was able to completely destroy Madara Susanoo with his own Jinton. As a matter of fact, Onoki says that Mu's Jinton is still just as strong as it was when he was in his prime. This is important because Jinton is stated to be able to destroy any ninjutsu that it comes into contact with, which is going to be very useful in the upcoming fight. Honestly, think of Mu as a stronger version of Onoki. They have a lot of things in common, such as Jinton and the ability to fly, but Mu has infinitely refilling chakra and regeneration due to the Edo Tensei jutsu. Because of their similarities, Onoki is actually considered to be the only person that can put a stop to Mu just because of how dangerous his particle style is. Even KCM1 Naruto had a hard time putting him down. Lord Mu was able to react to an off-guard attack from him despite the fact that Naruto had downward momentum and was being boosted by the acceleration of gravity. Immediately after this, Naruto leaps off some of Gaara's sand and attempts to charge at Mu once again. While this is happening, Mu observes Naruto's speed and says, Dodge this, my jutsu is faster than yours, directly proving that Jinton is faster than KCM when Naruto is. Third Raikage A is well known to be a one-man army. He took on 10,000 shinobi for three days straight with no food or water before he finally died. During his reign as the Raikage, he was actually stated to be the strongest shinobi from his village, which would put him above a younger version of his son A and Perfect Jinchuriki B. During the Third Great Shinobi War, it's stated that Jonin A fought Minato to a stalemate on multiple occasions and that they mutually recognized each other as combatants. Of course, the encounter we see between these two is a little bit different. Minato is able to react to A's fastest punch and then teleport behind him where he almost kills him. Minato's kunai is inches away from A's back, yet B is able to come in out of absolutely nowhere and push A to safety before Minato can hurt him. So basically, Killer B covered a larger distance in a shorter amount of time, which means that he'd be faster than Minato. The third Raikage would scale to this tier of speed because in order to be stronger than B, he'd also have to be relative to him in speed by extension. This scaling is actually supported by A's feats during the 4th Great Shinobi War. He was able to dodge KC and Wanaruto's Rasen Shuriken twice consecutively, which would imply upper end relativity. After witnessing the 3rd Raikage speed, Naruto thinks back to his encounter with the 4th Raikage in which he was consistently matching KCM1 Naruto speed. This would just further cement the idea that the 3rd Raikage is on this KCM1 tier speed. Of course, the 3rd Raikage is not only very fast, but extremely durable as well. His Lightning Cloak was able to tank a direct hit from KCM1 Naruto's Rasen Shuriken despite having an elemental disadvantage. Once this happens, A's body seems to sustain no real damage despite the fact that he just got hit with the strongest wind release jutsu that we know of. Of course, A used to go blow for blow with the A-Tails without wearing any armor. They used to stalemate each other on a regular basis. It's also heavily implied that the third Raikage's lightning cloak protected him from Yuki's Bijou bombs, so this dude is literally walking away from some of the strongest attacks in the entire series without a scratch. Of course, the third Raikage's hell stab should actually be more potent than a Rasen Shuriken and a Bijou bomb because it's the only thing that could break through the lightning cloak, despite the fact that the lightning cloak is stated to withstand any type of jutsu. Second Mizukage Gengetsu hasn't really been shown to be all that physically impressive, but he was able to stalemate Lord Mu during their deathmatch, so all of Lord Mu's speed scaling should apply here because in order for them to be relative, they have to be similar in speed. However, Gengetsu is far from useless. One of his best abilities is a Genjutsu that comes from his clam summoning. It creates a mirage where a fake Gengetsu stands in front of his enemies and distracts him while the real Gengetsu is free to do whatever he wants. The illusion spans a very wide range and all physical attacks are useless against the fake Gengetsu. It's also stated that the illusion will never stop unless the clam is destroyed entirely. 
The real Gengetsu and the clam cannot be seen or sensed, and the only way it was found in the original story was when Gara used his sand to track it down once again, similar to what he did to Moo. On top of this, the clam is pretty durable. It required all of Onoki's force to destroy it, so like normal physical attacks like punches and kicks won't be enough to break it. Another one of his abilities is called the Steam Imp. It's a clone of Gengetsu that's filled up with water. Whenever the clone moves around, the water inside heats up. Eventually, the water will reach its boiling point and the clone will create a massive explosion. However, the clone will reform itself soon after and start the process all over again, basically creating an infinite cycle of explosions. Gengetsu also possesses the water gun technique which either moves at the speed of light or a thunderbolt. The data book says both, so it really depends on your interpretation. Fourth Kazakage Rasa is Gara's father. He doesn't have as many feats as the other three because he was the first one to be sealed during the fourth grade shinobi war. Rasa wields the magnet release Keke Genkai, which allows him to control the gold dust in his surroundings, similar to how Gara controls his sand. As a matter of fact, Rasa's gold dust was able to match the power and speed of Gara's sand on multiple occasions. However, Rasa is still not as skilled as Gara is with his sand because Gara is able to outplay Rasa on multiple occasions and at the end of their fight, Rasa admits inferiority to him. However, the speed of Rasa's gold dust would still scale to Gara's sand, which is extremely important because Gara was able to block the 4th Rai Kage's guillotine drop and Sasuke's intone during the Kage summit. I've already demonstrated how the 4th Rai Kage has displayed relativity to KC and Naruto in speed earlier in this video, so the speed of Rasa's sand would just scale to that. On top of this, Rasa was constantly having to fight and defeat Shukaku whenever Gara lost control of him as a child, which should cement him on this Bijou tier, similar to the 3rd Rai Kage. Throughout the first half of Shippuden, Pain is stated countless times to be unbeatable and invincible by the data books and characters alike. On top of this, his powers and abilities are stated to surpass that of even Sage Naruto. Pain is one of the most popular characters in the entire series, so I'm not going to waste your time talking about his powers and abilities. I'm sure you guys are all familiar with them by now. I'm just going to go right into his scaling. Based off the statements that I mentioned earlier, I'd assert that Pain has the highest AP out of anyone else in the Akatsuki. Personally, I don't believe Pain is the strongest member of the Akatsuki. I believe that spot is reserved for either Itachi or Obito, but I do think that he hits the hardest out of anyone else in their group. I've actually seen some people claim that Pain scales to Nagato and is just as strong as him, but this is blatantly false. After witnessing what Nagato can do, Naruto heavily implies that facing the real deal is a lot more threatening than just the paths of Pain. Nagato also absorbed a large but unquantifiable amount of chakra from Killer B, possibly putting him at a greater level than he was when he was alive. Once this happens, Nagato starts bullying KCM1 Naruto and B kinda badly, while Pain is kinda just on a lower level, like he was going band for band with Sage Naruto and even admitted that Jiraiya was a problem for him. Don't get me wrong, Pain is still extremely strong, but whenever Nagato is hopped up on B's chakra, he's just in a completely different tier of strength. Speaking of Sage Naruto versus Pain, I do believe that Naruto did very well against Pain, like he basically one-shot every single path. But the thing is, the reason why Naruto did so well in the first place is because the Diva Path was unable to use its abilities. Now, I've seen a lot of people claim that Pain is extremely nerfed and fatigued after the chaotic Shinra Tensei, and this is true, like Nagato wasn't able to use the Diva Path's abilities for a long ass time. But the thing is, people use this to claim that Pain is so much weaker and slower that Sage Naruto wouldn't even scale to a full power Pain. Honestly, I believe this is entirely unprovable. I don't think you'd be able to prove that Pain got weaker and slower as a result of the chaotic Shinra Tensei. I think you could just come to the conclusion that he lost the abilities of the Diva Path for a short period of time, and that was pretty much the only consequence. Even if he did get slower and weaker, I don't think it would be by a large enough margin to actually claim that Sage Naruto wouldn't scale to a full power Pain. Now, I do believe it is an equally valid interpretation. You could still make a convincing argument for Pain being slower and weaker here because Chaotic Shinra Tensei does shorten Nagato's lifespan, but at the same time, Nagato only ever makes note of his inability to use the Diva Pass abilities and never says anything about the rest of the Pains getting weaker as a result. Now, I do believe that the main reason why Pain beat Naruto is because he kept on running out of Sage mode, but they should still be pretty much relative in speed as Pain was able to react to his kicks and attacks on multiple occasions. Now, I do believe Pain should be able to react to the KCM1 tier of speed, specifically due to his superiority to the Sanin. My reasoning for this is that the Sanin should be somewhat relative to Old Man Hirzen, if not slightly inferior to him, and he was considered to be the strongest out of the five Kage during his reign as Okage. Of course, the third and fourth Raikage were also present during Hirzen's time as Hokage, so this statement should apply to them as well. In order for Hirzen to be considered stronger than the Raikages, he'd have to at least be able to react to their attacks, which should apply to Pain as well. Now, I've always been under the impression that all six paths together are kind of ass. However, I believe that once more and more of the paths are taken down, the remaining ones get stronger as a result of this. 
It's shown that the pain's strongest jutsu comes from whenever Nagato is concentrating on one path, specifically the diva path. I believe this is why the diva path was able to survive the six tails for long enough to pull off Shibaku Tensei. I personally don't think Pain is all that impressive when it comes to his physical capabilities, like he should be around the same speed as Sage Naruto while likely having KCM1 level reactions, but the main source of his power comes from his extremely overpowered hacks abilities. Moving on to the real matchup at hand, Pain versus the former Kage. Now, Pain has a lot of abilities that hard counter the Kage's best jutsu, but as long as we're going in with no intel, he wouldn't know which paths to assign to which Kage right off the bat. At the same time, the former Kage probably won't have the best teamwork. Their nations have been fighting against each other for their entire lives. Hell, Mu and Gengetsu even killed each other. I believe that at the beginning, the former Kage would just go off and do their own thing. They'd be fighting pain in their own unique ways using their own jutsu instead of performing combo attacks with each other. Despite their lack of teamwork, I still definitely believe that the former Kage can defeat pain, and let me explain why. Rasa is probably the weakest person out of the group here, but he still hard counters the animal path and all of its summonings. Like I said earlier, he was beating up Shukaku on like a daily basis. These animal summons are going to be no problem for him. Unlike Gara, Rasa doesn't need to carry around that sand gourd on his back. He can literally pull the gold dust out of his surroundings and use it on his opponents. With his incredibly large supply of gold dust, he can put down and bury all of the summons. Even the chameleon and its invisibility will not be a problem for Rasa because he can track it down with his sand sensing. While Rasa is off slamming the animal path, Gengetsu can summon in his clam and cast a Genjutsu over the entire battlefield. This illusion will make the shared visions of the pains absolutely useless because they'll never know where the real Gengetsu is and he can quietly take them out from the shadows. Now, the Raikage is a very close range fighter, so his only option is to charge directly at the Paths of Pain. The Raikage's blunt force will be hard countered by the Diva Pass abilities, but Pain will soon realize that the Raikage can tank all of the attacks he dishes out. I actually don't think Pain has a single win con against the third Raikage. Neither the Diva Pass nor the Ashura Pass abilities will work on it. The Human and Naraka Pass won't be able to catch up to the Raikage, they're too slow, but even if they could, the Lightning Cloak will create a barrier between them. Since they will not be able to make physical contact with the Raikage, they will not be able to pull out his soul. Of course, the Praetor Path could try to absorb the Raikage's Lightning Cloak, but unless the Raikage has already been immobilized, not likely, the Praetor Path won't be able to catch up to him either. While all of this is unfolding, Mu will be watching in the background, learning about Pain's abilities and calculating his next move, just waiting to use his Jinton on Pain. When the time comes to use Jinton, Mu will hit his mark. I've already established that Jinton travels faster than KCM1 Naruto does, which Pain does not scale to. The path that Mu uses Jinton on will immediately die unless it is the Praetor Path or the Diva Path. Even if Mu does use it on these two paths for some reason, he can just use it again. He can spam Jinton as much as he wants because Edo Tensei have infinitely refilling chakras. By now, Pain is going to be spread out pretty thin. He needs the Diva Path to ward off the brute force attacks of the third Raikage, but he also needs to deflect Mu's Jinton at the same time. Meanwhile, Gengetsu and Rasa are going to be taking down the Lesser Paths of Pain very easily. They're still going to be fighting individually, but they don't necessarily need each other just yet. Only the Diva Path can counter Rasa's sand, but he's already going to be busy fighting the bigger threats like the third Raikage and Mu. None of the other paths are fast enough to escape Rasa's sand, nor do they have any real counter for it. By now, Rasa has taken out all of the animal summons with little difficulty and has set his targets on the other Paths of Pain. Meanwhile, the madman Gengetsu is causing absolute mayhem with his Genjutsu and possibly even his Steam Imp. Pain really has no counter to this illusion because he has no way of finding Gengetsu. He can either sneak up on them with his inescapable water pistol or he can just sick the Steam Imp on him, which will take out a path of pain with a resulting explosion. By now, Pain's numbers have dwindled and the Kage have taken out at least half of the paths. If the Naraka path is still active, I definitely believe Pain would go for the revive, but I see no reason why the Kage wouldn't be able to defeat the path that he brings back. Keep in mind that the Kage are not fatigued at this point. They have endless stamina thanks to the Edo Tensei Jutsu, so they can keep going for as long as they want. Undoubtedly, both sides would be very accustomed with their opponent's abilities this late in the game. Pain has seen that the Kage keep coming after him, hitting him harder and harder each time. He's gonna have to be entirely on the defensive, possibly sacrificing other paths for the Diva Path survival. By now, the Naraka Path is definitely dead. It's questionable if he would have even have been able to get a revive off in the first place, but even if he did, the Kages would immediately realize that he was the one bringing the Paths of Pain back and kill him immediately. Up until now, I don't think Pain would have been able to take out even a single one of the Kage. They're just too versatile for him. Mu can easily keep his distance by flying away and hitting Pain with long-range Jinton beams. The Raikage is just too fast to be hit, and Pain is going to have a very hard time getting his hands on him. The same goes for Rasa, who can have his sand protecting him at all times. 
As for Gengetsu, Pain has no way of catching him because he will never find the clam. He's just going to be running in circles the whole time. By now, the other five paths of Pain are dead and not a single one of the four Murkage has been sealed. It is now just the Diva Path facing off against the four at Okage. He has to resort to his strongest jutsu to defeat them. I don't think Pain would actually use Chaotic Shinra Tensei because he will realize that it will do absolutely nothing to the four Edo Kage. They will just regenerate from that. All that's left now is Chubaku Tensei. Pain has to resort to planetary devastation to take down the former Kage. While Chubaku Tensei is technically classified as an ninjutsu, it is also a sealing jutsu. So this is the Diva Path's only win con against the four Edo Kage. This is his last chance. Once he uses Chubaku Tensei, he will be too fatigued to keep fighting against the Edo Kage, so he better hope it works. Except, it won't. Lord Mu is going to vaporize that shit. He is going to blast it out of the sky with Jinton. Remember how I said that Chubaku Tensei is classified as a ninjutsu? And even earlier in the video, I said that Particle Release is stated to be able to destroy any ninjutsu? Yeah, that's where I'm going with this. The orb within Chubaku Tensei is not a black hole, it is stated to be a compressed sphere of very very dense chakra. It's not like it's an intangible gravity well, it's a thing that physically exists. Naruto, Itachi, and B were able to combine their power together and destroy it. As soon as Mu one-shots the Chubaku Tensei orb, Pain's hopes of defeating the Kage are officially over. Nagato is going to be coughing up blood because he just used his strongest ability. We've already seen the effect Chubaku Tensei had on the Diva Path. His performance suffered greatly. Even base Naruto was able to overwhelm him and ultimately take him out. Since Chubaku Tensei didn't work, Pain has no other win cons, no other sealing jutsu, no way of taking down the former Kage, so they will eventually win. Of course, the scenario could go a little bit differently than what I described, but I still believe the outcome is the same. Pain is defeated without a single Kage going down. I believe Gen Getsu and A are very straightforward here. I think that they would do exactly what I said that they would do. As in, Gen Getsu activates his Gen Jutsu right off the bat, just like he did in the manga, and the third Raikage really has no other option other than to charge directly at Pain. Now, you can argue Mu would end up doing something other than what I described, but I believe Rasa would eventually come to fight the Animal Path just because it's a perfect match for him. He'd realize that he'd be able to take down these summons with very low difficulty because they're nowhere near as strong as the Bijou is. But let me know what you think. Did I change your mind on how strong the former Edo Kage are, or do you still think Pain would slam? Let me know down in the comments. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to leave a like on it, or even consider subscribing. Join the Discord server if you haven't already. Link is in the description. Other than that, I'm gonna catch y'all later. Peace!